Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as we plant some brassica seeds. So let's go. Today is February 14th, happy Valentine's Day. And I wanted to make a quick video just showing you my process for planting some of my brassica seeds. Brassica, you ask? Yes, brassica. I wanted to tell you a little bit about what brassicas entail or what they are. There are many vegetables that fall in the category of brassica. And some of those vegetables include Brussels sprouts, which I've already started from seed, broccoli, there's cabbage, there's also cauliflower, there's kale, there's kohlrabi, and then there's a whole bunch of other plants, but that just gives you an idea of some plants that fall under that category. And to be honest with you, I have grown broccoli, and that's pretty much it in my garden out of that whole category of brassicas. And my experience wasn't great. The experience was that the cabbage moth, which we all know loves all these plants that fall in this category of brassicas, had laid its eggs. I ended up with all those worms, and I really did not feel like eating my broccoli after I saw all those worms in there. And what I've learned just from doing my own research is that, you know, if you put insect netting over your plants, you can protect them so that the plants are still growing, light is still coming in, you can open up the insect netting, you can water your plants, close back up the insect netting, and then the cabbage moth doesn't have a chance to lay its eggs and you won't get those nasty worms inside of your brassica plants. And they won't make all the holes that they end up doing with the leaves. It's, it's just so much better to protect your plants. So I am planning to do that this year because I really do like a lot of the vegetables that fall within this brassica family. And I'm going to be growing a lot of the plants and I'm also planning to sell some of the plants as part of my backyard plant nursery because this spring people will be coming they're going to be one to buy perennial plants uh, that are part of my nursery and I'll have some vegetable starts that they can buy as well. Because last year there was definitely a huge interest in people wanting to buy vegetable plants as well as flowers from me. So I wanted to tell you what we're going to be planting together today. We have the Brunswick cabbage and this is by Baker Creek. We also have the broccoli, it's Waltham 29, also by Baker Creek. And then the purple of Sicily cauliflower, which the third seed here is, you guessed it, Baker Creek. I bought these last year. I started some of them and they grew, but then I didn't get them put out into my raised beds. Here where I live, I have some sunny spots for sure, but I don't have like your typical big vegetable garden that's out in a full sun area. So in order for me to effectively have a successful vegetable garden, I have to do one of two things. I either need to grow my plants in pots and those pots would get placed in the areas where I get full sun, or I need to plant them in the raised beds that I put in last year, which are located on the south side of my house. And in those raised beds, I'm planning to put some of these vegetable plants in there, and then I can easily cover them. So I'm really looking forward to doing that this year. So when it comes to starting your seeds for these type of brassica plants, you wanna do a little research. You wanna look at the back of your seed packet and see when you're supposed to be starting these seeds. When I did a search on the internet, I generally found that I can plant these about eight weeks before my last frost. My last frost, based on my zip code, is around the middle of May. So I'm starting these a little early, but I'm also planning to protect them. I'm planning to bring them outside on the warm days and bring them back inside on the cooler nights. But there are a bunch of other ways you can protect your plants. You can put them in a cold frame, you can put them in a greenhouse, you can protect them with frost cloth. So definitely look into that if that's something that you wanna do as well. And when it comes to starting these seeds, I'm gonna be using a seed starting mix. You can buy a seed starting mix, you can make your own, you can use a potting mix, and you can either make your own or buy your own potting mix. These seeds are generally on the bigger side, I would say, so a potting mix would even be fine. And when it comes to starting the seeds, a lot of different ways you can do this. One of the ways that I like to do it is I like to use these restaurant to-go containers 
and I made holes in the bottom of the containers so that it's easy for me to, to bottom water these. And I like to plant a lot of seeds in a tray like this. And as the plants get a little bit larger, I then prick, the, prick out the plants and I pot them up into six packs. But you can definitely plant these in, let's say, a six pack or something like that. Um, it's, it's a matter of preference. One thing that I like about doing it this way is only the seeds that want to germinate will germinate. And the seeds that don't want to germinate, well, I'll never see them show up in here. So I'm only going to prick out the ones that I see. And also what I like about this method is it doesn't take up a lot of room. So I can put this right on a heat mat and I can put a bunch of other trays just like this on my heat mats. Whereas with all the seeds in each of these packets, if I was to try to put them in six packs and put them on my heat mats, they wouldn't fit. So this method works for me, but you want to do the method that works best for you. With my method, it's definitely multi-step process. You first plant them here, then you need to prick them out, put them in a six pack. If they get even larger, you need to prick them out and put them in maybe a three inch pot. So you can definitely do the method that best fits your situation, your time. And another thing you want to consider is space. So behind me, I have many grow lights. And so I have quite a bit of space, actually. So if I wanted to, I could just put these directly into larger cells and I would have enough space behind me. But let's say you didn't have a lot of space. Let's say you just had a very small grow light system. Then something like this would work out really well. It buys you a little bit of time. It buys you a little bit of space. A lot of factors to think about when it comes to seed starting. So in this container here, I have seed starting mix. And it's seed starting mix that I made myself. And I like to make my own seed starting mix because it does save me a lot of money. And I also use boiling hot water and I pour it over my seed starting mix. And I like to do that for two reasons. The first main reason is it kills off any potential fungus gnat eggs that may be in my peat moss. And I like to use a mixture of peat moss and vermiculite for my seed starting mix, but you could use uh, cocoa core if you like, and you can mix in some vermiculite or you can mix in some perlite. What I like about the vermiculite for a seed starting mix is that it really retains the water. And a lot of times you need that when you're starting your seeds, they need that moisture. And the vermiculite works out really great because it helps with drainage. So when I'm potting up my plants, and I'm giving them a lot of water, I wanna make sure that that water is properly draining. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put some of the seed starting mix in the bottom of my tray. And the plants are not gonna live in these trays that long. They are literally gonna be in here for no more than a few weeks. But I really enjoy this process of doing it multi-step like this, because to be honest with you, it's still very cold here in New Hampshire. It, there's a lot of snow still on the ground. And it's just something that I, that I enjoy. I like watching my little plants grow. And also what I found when I do this method is then when I pot my plants up and put them into my bigger trays, I'm only potting up good, healthy, strong plants. And I, don't, I just don't like having trays that are half empty with you know, plants that germinated and then plants that didn't germinate. So the first set of seeds that we're going to sow are the cauliflower. And this is really pretty. I just think this is going to look so nice and I'm sure it will taste nice as well. And my plan for these seeds for this year is to sow all of them because they are one year old seeds. And I, if I need to buy more next year, I can always buy more next year. Because the way it works with seeds is every year that goes by, the seeds are less and less viable, which means that they, the percentage of seeds that are going to germinate will decrease as the years go on. And I have quite a few seeds here that I'm going to sow. And I'm going to sow them pretty heavily because, again, they're not going to be in this tray for that long. And it's a good time of year to be doing all of the brassicas in, here in my zip code where I live. I'm very excited about the Brussels sprouts that I sowed. And if I'll put a link below to some of the other videos that show some of the other seeds that I already have started under my uh, LED shop lights that are behind me. One thing I wanted to mention that I haven't talked about a lot is a fan. When you are growing seeds indoors or 
you know, little plants, little seedlings. You want to make sure that you get some sort of movement, some sort of a fan. The fan helps in a lot of different ways. First of all, it makes your plants much stronger. When you think about it, as the plant is growing, it's, and you look at it, it grows kind of, it looks like a very skinny, very thin, but the minute you bring it outside and it's windy outside, that plant might not have much of a chance of survival. So the fan acts almost like the wind outside and it makes movement around the plants. Now, granted, you don't need to have your fan set super high. It can even be on low and you don't need to have your fan set, you know, all day long. The lights behind me turn on at uh, 5 a.m. and then they turn off at 9 p.m. The fan is also on a timer. I only have the fan on for maybe three hours, I think it is. You don't need it on all day. The key is just to get movement. You, you really want that. And also it helps, the fan helps dry out your soil. Plants don't like to be too wet either because if the soil is too wet, sometimes it can cause fungal issues. So on the back of the seed packet, it says that these seeds will sprout in seven to 10 days. The ideal temperature for seed germination is 50 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite a big range. The depth of the seed should be about one fourth to one half of an inch. And I just put down about one quarter of an inch of the, of the seed starting mix. And then when it says planting instructions, it does say sow very early indoors or direct seed outdoors six to eight weeks ahead of your last frost date. And then you can do another succession, another planting late in the summer. But for right now, we're just gonna focus on the spring. So now that we've planted these seeds, the next thing that I like to do is, even though this seed starting mix is, has already been pre-moistened, we're gonna add just a little bit more water into this container here. And now that the water has been added, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this with clear plastic wrap. And if you have some sort of a clear dome or cover, you could put that on here as well. And the main purpose for that is just to lock in the moisture and also make it a little bit more humid of an environment in here, which is a perfect environment for seedlings to wanna to germinate in. And what I like about the clear plastic wrap is that I can use it for a number of times during the season. Even though I'm gonna write down the name of this plant on the clear plastic wrap, I will leave plenty of room. So then when I wanna sell more plants and use the same wrap, I can write on it again. So what I'm gonna write down is the name of the plant and the date that we sowed these seeds. How about you? Have you started any of your brassica seeds? And if so, which ones have you started? And also, what zone do you live in? I have a lot of plants that I need to start from seed, and it's not just the brassicas. I want to start some other vegetables, like my peppers, and then also I have a ton of flowers that I need to start. So in terms of videos, what I was thinking of doing was trying to just do a few seeds at a time and maybe grouping them by family, which is why today we're just doing the brassicas. And then next time we could sow perhaps all of the pepper plants that I have. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing because you don't want to miss out on any of the videos because I'll be not only sowing seeds together with you, but I'll also be showing you updates. So we are now going to sow the broccoli Waltham 29, and there are a lot of seeds in here. I am very, very heavily sowing these. Once again, my intention is I really don't need this many, is to keep some for myself but then also to sell some. And I can see there, there are a lot of seeds here. So as much as I'd love to plant all of them, I just think that would be kind of a waste. I don't think there's any way that I'm gonna use or sell this many, this many plants. So I am just gonna put most of them back. The back of the seed packet says that these seedlings will germinate in seven to 10 days. And the ideal temperature for germination is 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit seed depth of a quarter inch to a half inch. And so we're gonna go ahead and add the seed starting mix to the top here. 
And again, I'm going to do about a quarter inch. You always want to make sure when you're planting seeds that you read the back of the package. There are some seeds that require light to germinate. So that's very important. You always want to just check that. And the biggest thing is you want to make sure that the seed itself makes good contact with the soil, which is why I'm just lightly pressing down. We're going to go ahead and add some water. I do have a cold frame that my sister-in-law gifted me that she made herself, and I am planning to use that this year. And I'll definitely make a video showing my plans for that cold frame and how I plan on just using it to extend my season. I'm going to write down the name and the date. Okay, our final seed that we're going to sow is the Cabbage Brunwick. I got these containers from the 99 restaurant. My kids just love the food there. So a lot of times instead of eating at the restaurant, we'll just get food um, like to go and just bring it home and eat it here. And I always felt bad throwing these containers away. And they really just come in so handy for seed starting. I like to, when I make my seed starting mix or my potting mix, I like to make it in bulk. And because I'm putting boiling hot water in it, I then need to let it sit for a while. So I find in order to use my time wisely that I will make, like I'll use up a batch of soil. I'll use the boiling hot water and mix it in, cover this up. And I usually try to do that either late at night before I go to bed or very early in the morning before I start my day. And that way it gives the soil plenty of time to cool down before I'm ready to use it. Okay, let's see how many seeds are in here before I say I'm going to use all of them and then I decide I'm not. Well, it, I think, I think I'm going to use all of them. I better sell these plants. I know a few people I can give cabbage plants to and broccoli plants to. I'm sure they'll be happy. Okay, I lied. There were a lot of seeds in this packet. I don't love keeping seeds year after year. I just get worried about them, um, that they're not going to survive that long. But, you know, if you look it up on the Internet, certain plants, the seed viability goes down by a lot. Like uh, pelleted, any seed that's pelleted, you want to use the first year. Or um, like onions, onions you definitely want to get planted the first year. I, I believe even parsley. There are certain plants, though, that you can have the seeds for years and the viability is still fair after many years. So you just have to do your research on that. It changes from plant to plant. Okay, so the cabbage will sprout in seven to 10 days. The ideal temperature is 50 to 75 degrees for seed germination. Seed depth is a quarter inch. So let's go ahead and put that in. And I'm noticing for sun, all of these say, which is true for almost any vegetable plant, except maybe like lettuce and a few others, um, it says six to 12 hours of full sun. So that's very important when you're doing your vegetables and starting them from seed and planting them outside. Or... And when I find a big chunk like this, I just take it out of my mix here because I don't want that to get in the way of the plants trying to grow. Okay, we got our brassicas planted. I'm very excited about this. And what I plan on doing is I will be putting these on a heat mat. Now, it is not necessary to do that. I've been gardening for a long time. And let me tell you, I never owned a heat mat. And I gardened just fine. Plants that I started indoors germinated when they were ready. And the only reason that I bought a heat mat this year was because I want to germinate things a little bit faster. I am making these videos to share with you. And so I want to be able to see my plants germinate faster so then I can show you the next steps. But honestly, if your house is generally warm and stays about 70 degrees Fahrenheit during the daytime, you really don't need to invest in a heat mat. Do what's right for you. But I didn't have one for many years and my plants, even my like pepper plants and my eggplants, all germinated just fine. 
I'm excited about having a heat mat, definitely, but it is not a requirement. And when it comes to gardening, especially if you're new to gardening and starting seeds indoors, don't worry about, you know, buying a whole lot of things. There, you easily can just spend so much money on the trays that you're using and the pots that you're using. But that's all nice, but it's not necessary. A lot of my pots I get for free. There's a local nursery close by here, and they have an area where you can recycle pots. So many of my six packs and trays have come from there. So keep your eyes open when it comes to all of that. And just try to keep it as simple as possible because ultimately the key is you want to enjoy this whole process of gardening. You want to learn, but you don't want to necessarily spend unnecessary money if you don't have to. After all, my channel is all about how to garden on a budget. So hopefully I can share some of those tips with you. And until the next video, which should be coming out soon because I really need to get those peppers planted, make it a great day with gardening.